when Peer Power first started, training did not look like what it looks like today. Now we have this expansive group of college students and high school students that cannot be managed by one person. There must be the institutionalization of certain qualities and characteristics and values and because the group has grown so we have to be more intentional about making sure that those values, those behaviors, the conduct, the passion, the love, the enjoyment, the excitement, we have to be intentional about making sure that every one of our employees embody those things. So what did that look like for us? They didn't have to put us in a room and tell us we have to build relationships with each other because we already had relationships with each other. What happened was the Greater East High Foundation really capitalized on a structure that was already in place that was built by the honors teachers, the optional school programs. There was Linda Scalar who helped with the recruitment of the optional school, optional school students at East High School. There was Miss Hightower. There was Coach Marcus Wimberly. There were these people who were doing exceptional, an exceptional job with their students and making sure camaraderie was there. So we didn't have to approach it as if there were a group of strangers that came together. So when relationship is already intact, Pip Power didn't have to do anything but recognize there's relationship. Let's take that. We built groups then. The groups that were built amongst the tutors and mentors. We were called tutors and mentors. They told us, you can mentor kids. What? I can mentor? What? I can tutor? We already knew we were smart enough to tutor. Okay, let's tutor. But this whole idea of mentorship, meaning that I have something in me that's worth imparting into somebody who's just like me, who's, who's my peer. So you mean I got some power that can be utilized to change somebody else's life? Who knew that?